As you may be aware, on the 25th of September 2018, Hariba Mirror were granted planning permission by Hinckley and Bosworth Council to build a driverless car test track on part of the registered battlefield site of the Battle of Bosworth. This is causing all kinds of controversy, quite rightly too. It's a terrible, awful decision and abuse of our heritage. But there are also lots of procedural things that I think went wrong with the, the arrival of this decision that I'd just like to, to pick my way through at the moment. I mean, the Battle of Bosworth is one of the most important and key turning points in English and British history. It's often used as a marker, rightly or wrongly, for the end of the medieval period. But it certainly marked the end of the Plantagenet dynasty and the beginning of their replacement by the, the infamous Tudor dynasty. So it's a key turning point in, in our history, and thus I feel deserves protection. And that protection seems to have been sadly lacking in the granting of this planning permission. So I'm going to go back a little bit to the beginning. I mean, this, this process was kept very, very quiet. The, the council and Hariba Mira are adamant that it was publicised um, in, in accordance with the requirements of the law. And perhaps it was. But nevertheless, anyone who has any interest in this knew nothing about it until well after the reenactment weekend at Bosworth. And it was a few days before the original planning meeting that it first came to everyone's attention. And when the storm blew up, the council uh, voted to defer their decision for four weeks to obtain further information, which they don't seem to have gained an awful lot of. And they met again on the 25th of September. And at that meeting, they simply agreed to the planning process. The first issue, I think, is with some of the advice that the council had. So they went to Historic England, who are the statutory watchdog, um, who are, are tasked with protecting English heritage. Um, and they went to them for advice. And I think some of the information both that Historic England provided was flawed, but also the council's reliance on that information was deeply, deeply flawed. So in a letter uh, that Historic England wrote to the council, they told them um, that the testing track and associated landscapes will be visible from certain points within the battlefield. So it's quite clear from the outset here that this is not going to be an invisible development. This is going to be something that when you go on a tour of the battlefield site, you're going to be able to see this driverless car test track in the landscape. They also said that the development will cause some harm to the significance of the battlefield, but that it is not substantial harm. So it's clear that harm is going to be caused, and I would argue that any harm to an area like the battlefield of the Battle of Bosworth should be quantified as being substantial. We're going to be destroying archaeology and changing the, the landscape uh, on which the battle was fought forever, and I think that is a substantial harm. Uh, they also went on to say that the direct physical impact on the registered battlefield is to a very small area on the edge of the site and not in an area of important historic action, but is nevertheless a change to the character of part of the battlefield, which is currently rural. So they do not believe that this was in an important area of the battle, yet it's within the registered battlefield site. Why is it registered if it's not important? And if it's registered, how are you allowed to still build on it? But they do note that this is going to be a change to the landscape. It's currently rural, and there's going to be a humongous tarmac track on there with a control tower and other associated buildings. Uh, Historic England also said that the track and landscaping will be visible as a modern element to those exploring the battlefield, reinforcing the notion that this is going to be something that when people go to the battlefield, their, their view is going to be interrupted by this development. They also go on to say that the decision maker needs to balance the harm against the public benefits that it will bring. And I think this is where the council has been incredibly flawed. The damage is irreparable and substantial, I believe. And the benefit is something that the council is, is hoping for. They're taking a punt on this. There's no guarantees about what jobs this might bring. The figure seems to have gone from 250 in the first instance to now being almost 2,000, as though that kind of builds the case for what Hariba Mira are hoping to achieve. Uh, and in conclusion, Historic England told the council, uh, we have considered if moving the testing track slightly to the west to avoid the registered battlefield altogether would help reduce its impact. However, it would be visible in the landscape and would potentially be more visible because the land rises to the west. So we're being told here there is an alternative site available slightly to the west and still within uh, Hariba's um, orbit of their, their current buildings. It's been uh, rejected 
on the basis that uh, it, it would be visible in the landscape. But they're already saying that the plan that has been approved will be visible in the landscape. And the point about this location to the west is that it's off the registered battlefield site. So there is a viable alternative there that Hariba Mira have not been required to investigate or justify overlooking. During the council meeting as well, one of the councillors pointed out that there are plenty of empty fields on the other side of the A5 from the development and that they aren't on the registered battlefield site either. So why couldn't Hariba Mira use one of those? And that doesn't seem to have been investigated and there doesn't seem to have been any requirement on Hariba Mira to investigate it. In Historic England's paperwork for registering battlefield sites, they're very clear that they refer to the, the national planning framework um, which sets out that registered battlefields are designated heritage assets of the highest significance. Now that couldn't be clearer, and yet Historic England don't seem to be objecting to building on one of those very sites. They go on to say about the battlefields that they and their setting should be protected and enhanced, and the granting of permission for developments causing substantial harm should be wholly exceptional. Now, Historic England have got around this by saying that they don't think the damage is substantial to the site. I would argue that that's incorrect. And I don't see what would be wholly exceptional about the need to build a driverless car test track in this particular area either. And if we talk about the, the national planning framework uh, that, Harib, uh, that Historic England mentioned there, that says very specifically in point 194, uh, any harm to or loss of the significance of a designated heritage asset from its alteration or destruction or from development within its setting should require clear and convincing justification. And it also said that assets of the highest significance, notably scheduled monuments, protected wreck sites, registered battlefields, grade one and grade two listed buildings, grade one and grade listed to grade two listed registered parks and gardens and world heritage sites should be wholly exceptional, the arguments to develop on them. I don't think this case is wholly exceptional at all. We've already seen that there are alternatives available to the location on which this is to be built. It isn't something that can't possibly be done anywhere else. It is not exceptional. One of the frustrating things about the planning meeting on the 25th of September was that the council only permitted one uh, person to speak in objection to the plans and they were limited to three minutes. And yet in the appendices to some of the information, Hariba Mirror have clearly been provided with lots and lots of time to provide background information and to challenge the information that's been put forward by both the Battlefield Trust and the Richard III Society, neither of whom were provided with a chance to rebut any of these assertions that were made by uh, Hariba Mirror. Interestingly, they have, have entitled their, uh, their document Battlefield Impact Fact or Assertions to try and pick apart everything that the Battlefield Trust uh, and Richard III Society have said. One of the first interesting things that they've said is that the, the proposals will affect 0.56% of the extended registered Bosworth Battlefield. I'm sure they put the word extended in there just to make it sound like it's less important, but we're talking about 0.56% of the registered battlefield. It may not sound like a lot, but we'll come back to the numbers a little bit later. It's actually a little bit more in terms of area than you might imagine. Uh, they say that the, the Battlefield Trust contend that the discovery of further battlefield archaeology in the form of a round shot from the battle raises the possibility of further important archaeology from the battle across the proposed development site uh, being found in the future. Um, and they assert that Professor Glenn Ford, who's a preeminent expert on the battlefield, interprets the single round shot as an overshot. But if you look at the map of the distribution of the round shot, the single round shot that they're talking about is way off to the west of this map. And in fact, you can see that there are at least two found round shots within the, the perimeter of the development. And that means there could well be more beneath the ground there that will be destroyed, built over and lost. And if it turns out that this is a site where there was far more action than we currently believe there was, then we won't have the opportunity to undo this development. In their section entitled Assertions Only, uh, Haribo Mira say that the Battlefield Trust state the proposed development sits in the vicinity of the crest over which uh, the Fen Lane approaches the battlefield, and this is almost certainly where the Rebel Army first saw the Royal Army's deployment. And if the development goes ahead, it would have a serious impact on this important feature. 
Now, Hermira say, Hermira Mira say that this is an assertion that is not supported by evidence. But they're also very clear all the way through their uh, information that nobody really knows where anybody was at the Battle of Bosworth. So quite how they can say that it's fine to build on these certain points because there's nothing there, uh, and yet claim that um, the Battlefield Trust can't possibly know where anybody was because none of that information is known for certain, doesn't really make too much sense. They say here that Henry's approach to the battlefield is not definitively known. So how can you know that you're not building over it? In point two, they say that the Battlefield Trust is concerned that marginal development such as the proposal risks the incremental destruction of the battlefield at Bosworth, as the council will find it hard to reject, um, given the precedent this case establishes, especially if such applications are small scale. So the fear is that once this site has been built upon, there will be requests to extend and extend and extend further and further into the registered battlefield site, and that precedent will be used to, to help to obtain permission to further destroy the battlefield. Harima Mira say that precedent isn't being set and that the council would have to judge each of those requests on uh, their individual merits. But it's worth considering that at the first meeting, Harima Mira were very keen to point out the precedent of existing buildings on the site, the Battlefield Heritage Centre, uh, farms and roads that have previously been built there, they said, made the case that it was okay to build on the registered battlefield site. It goes on to say that the Battlefield Trust also questions whether the full economic impact of the development has been correctly assessed, uh, claiming that there would be a negative impact on battlefield tourism. And Hariba Mira rebut this by simply saying there is no evidence to suggest that the proposal would have a negative effect on visitors to the battlefield. But I don't know how they would understand that. I've received several tweets from people saying that they're disgusted in the way the council has dealt with this and they have no intention of ever going to Bosworth Heritage Centre ever again. Now, that is a negative impact on tourists. People will take their, their tourist pounds somewhere else. The document goes on to say that it has been contended uh, that it is possible to stand where Henry Tudor stood when he first saw Richard III's army. But then they go on to say that, as stated above, there is no certainty about the movements of Henry Tudor, only speculation and hypotheses. So their claim that there is nothing underneath this site and that you can't stand on the point where Henry Tudor uh, first saw the, the royal army and that they're not going to build on that area is surely no more than speculation and hypotheses. Uh, they go on to say that the Battlefield Trust has released various statements in support of their campaign that claim that proposals will lead to significant destruction and harm. I would tend to agree with that, but they say that we would uh, respectfully suggest that these statements are not as informed as the stakeholders involved in this application process, namely Historic England and Leicestershire County Council. I would strongly disagree with that. Historic England disbanded their archaeological and battlefield panel several years ago. They don't have any battlefield expertise um, within their, their own organisation. So what qualifies them to look at this further than the Battlefield Trust? And the same for Leicestershire County Council. They're a council. They don't deal um, with battlefield archaeology as a matter of routine. And yet they're being held up uh, as better qualified to talk about this than the Battlefield Trust and all of the experts that they possess. Uh, so if we're going to talk about facts and assertions, I think it's interesting to take a look at the public documents that were released just before the meeting on the 25th of September, because an awful lot of this is information coming from Hariba Mirror to support their, uh, their application. Now, they start off by saying that um, connected and autonomous vehicles, referred to as CAVs, uh, CAVs bring huge benefits to society. Do they? What, what benefits? Where are connected automotive vehicles being used, uh, connected autonomous vehicles being used at the moment, where they're providing um, a, a swathe of benefits to society? Isn't the point of building a test track because this technology isn't finished and isn't widely available, so it needs to be tested and proven? So clearly that's an assertion based on absolutely nothing. And one of the things Hariba Mira say, is that some of the vehicles will use robotic drivers and incorporate untested state-of-the-art technologies resulting in potentially high-risk tests demanding large safety runoff areas. Now, I'm not sure whether they're offering any kind of guarantee that there isn't going to be a, a huge accident on this site. What if a vehicle explodes? They talk later on about several lorries being used fully laden and in convoy. 
What if there's an accident that destroys some archaeology beneath the site? What if these things escape the runoff areas and career around the main battlefield site, causing even more damage? There doesn't seem to be any concern or guarantee about that. They go on to say that these cars will be tested at a, a maximum speed of up to 120 kilometers an hour, which begs the question of how much noise that will make. Um, they also say that trucks, uh, there will be platooning of fully laden trucks for slip road merging and demerging scenarios at a maximum test speed of 80 kilometers an hour. Now, again, that's a lot of a lot of vehicle, and that's an awful lot of potential noise to visitors for the battlefield site as well. One of the interesting things they say is that tests such as ISO step steer test at higher test speeds of 120 kilometers an hour would not be possible on a 300 meter diameter platform, which is what they're looking to build. And so they say further on um, that the, the above constraints already result in a degree of compromise. So this site is already imperfect. They've said that they can't build anywhere else because there isn't a suitable site, but they're also saying that this site isn't suitable. And given that they've been provided with alternatives to the west and across the other side of the A5, it seems to me that building here is the worst of both possible worlds for both parties. Like they also say they're looking to do some archaeology as part of the, the planned um, development. But they say this is still being agreed, but it is likely that it will include three parts, which seems to me to suggest that it might also include no parts. And they're talking about the recovery of any battle-related metal artefacts. But what about leather? What about fabric? What about stones from gunstones? All of these things are overlooked by this reliance on the fact that they need to find metal. They make an offer to create a virtual fly-through of the landscape, as it might have been at the time of the battle, and provide this to the, the Battlefield Heritage Centre, their assertion being that people would then be able to, to visit the battlefield virtually. And they seem to be suggesting that there's a preference for people to visit it virtually rather than going there in person. Frankly, I think that's a disgraceful assertion. I don't think anyone wants to visit a battlefield virtually when they could walk the fields themselves and they could see the landscape for themselves if it wasn't destroyed by modern developments. Um, they talk about the provision of interpretation boards. Um, and they say here, interestingly, again, given that they were talking before about the, the lack of knowledge about who was where um, impacting what Battlefield Trust was saying about the, the siting of the development, they say here, there is difficulty in exactly placing who was where when, hence the incorrect placing of the battle for the last 400 years or so. That's an incredibly important statement. They're admitting that nobody knows where anybody was for certain on the site of the battle, but at the same time, they're asserting that they're definitely not building on anything that's interesting or important. So which is it? Either we don't know where everyone was, or the site you're building on isn't important, but it can't be both, because if you don't know where everyone was, then what's underneath your site could be incredibly important. I think it's quite striking when we talk about uh, these developments being of, of national and even international importance, that the council's own information suggests that of the objections they received, 4% um, came from within the borough, 81% of responses were from outside the borough but within the UK, and the remaining 15% came from outside the UK. So we clearly have a matter here that appeals not only to, to local interests, but to national interests, and which is considered internationally important enough for people to register complaints from outside the UK at the thought of the government allowing um, Hariba Mira to build on the registered battlefield site. It's perhaps also striking that amongst 680 odd um, objections to this development, um, they say that they've received one letter of support. I think it's interesting if we look at some of the, the wording that was coming out of the second planning meeting as well, when this was approved. Uh, the Leicester Mercury were, were live reporting from the meeting, uh, and they said that when it came for, for the motion to vote in favour, it was seconded, <coughs> it was seconded um, by Councillor Kevin Morrill, uh, who said that no residents locally had raised any concerns about the track plan with him. Well, clearly there was 4% of objections from within the area. So either he's not aware of what's happening within his own area, or this isn't entirely true. He also said that the Watchdog Historic England has not objected, and so he accepts that conclusion. But what conclusion is he accepting? He's clearly trying to make out that Historic England have said they approve uh, of this planning application, which isn't what they say at all. But Historic England have let themselves and, and all of us down here, because in failing to object, 
um, and to, to ins insist that the battlefield should be protected, they have allowed the council to paint that as an acceptance of an agreement to the proposal. It was frustrating as well that at the meeting on the 25th of September, an online petition which had garnered almost 15,000 signatures uh, was utterly dismissed by the council on the grounds that they don't recognise petitions in which they don't have the full names and full postal addresses of everyone who signed. Now, in 2018, that's just not the way the world works, is it? But it provides a convenient excuse for the council to be able to bin off, you know, 15,000 people's objections to the plan that they obviously wanted to approve. Now, we also talked earlier a little bit about the 0.56% the figure of the battlefield that was going to be damaged. Now, the entire battlefield covers 2,664 acres of rural countryside. The proposed development claims to only cover 0.56%, making it an insignificant amount of the battlefield. But 0.56% of 2,664 acres equates to 15 acres. Now, that can be represented as 10 football pitches. Now, I don't think that's an insignificant area. Uh, if someone was offering me a back garden that was 10 football pitches size, I wouldn't think that was insignificant at all. I think we, we have to query a little bit whether Historic England are entirely fit for the purpose that they're trying to fulfil here. If they lack a battlefield panel, how can they protect battlefields? How can they have the expertise to say what should and what shouldn't be allowed to go through? Uh, Historic England currently protects 46 uh, registered battlefield sites across England. And we can look at the map of the, the proposed site and the registered battlefield site, and we can very clearly see where the overlap is. And if we overlay that with the gunstone finds that were mentioned a little bit earlier, we can clearly see that they come very close and in a couple of instances uh, enter into the proposed development area. There may well be an awful lot more to be found in the area that might radically change our understanding of the battle. It was only 10 years ago that it was altered by uh, some of these finds to give us a better understanding of exactly where some of the action took place and where some of the, the armies must have lined up. And this proposed development represents the most likely area on which Henry Tudor's army passed through uh, and maybe even mustered in this region ready for the battle. Historic England say on their website, we are the public body that helps care for, enjoy and celebrate England's spectacular historic environment. We protect, champion and save the places that define who we are and where we come from as a nation. We care passionately about the stories they tell, the ideas they represent and the people who live, work and play among them. Working with communities and specialists, we, care, we share our passion, knowledge and skills to inspire interest, care and conservation so everyone can keep enjoying and looking after the history that surrounds us all. I don't think they're doing that in the case of the development of Bosworth Battlefield. They have allowed the council to make the incorrect decision and hopefully it can be overturned somehow. Uh, once the council have issued approval, it's very, very difficult to get that changed. It may well involve a challenge in the courts and hopefully that might be something that can be looked at. But I strongly believe that the wrong decision has been made here and that Bosworth Battlefield and all of the other registered battlefields and all of our heritage and all of our history that contributes so much to our economy should be preserved and protected. Not because I despise progress, not because I'm a Luddite who wants to throw my clogs into the workings of autonomous vehicles or, or any other form of progress, but because the two can coexist. They can, they can go hand in hand. They can exist side by side, not on top of each other. It doesn't have to be a fight. So I would implore anyone who is able to contribute anything to having this decision overturned or reviewed to get in touch with me or to get in touch with the Battlefield Trust or to get in touch with the Richard III Society and to offer any expertise or thoughts that you might have. The fight isn't over uh, and hopefully we can get this, this incorrect decision overturned. <laughs>